Thank you, Dr. Alka. Come, I'll just make a comment. Because, because we are running, running short, short of time, time I, I will... will the outset, I would like to thank my dear friend, Nita, for inviting me to, uh, and also for the challenge to take on this topic. Uh, thanks, Sanjay, also for the invitation. And I'm very happy to see my favorite teacher over here, Dr. Boraskar. So nice to see you. Um, so let's uh, start. Uh, sexual dysfunction in women is the topic uh, that I have, uh, in women with diabetes. We all know that diabetes affects various organs in our body. From head to toe, we talk about all other complications. Somehow, why do we shy about talking about sexual dysfunction, especially in women? While going through the literature, I um, came up uh, across another article which was written by the late Dr. Sadi Kot. Uh, female sexual uh, dysfunction, don't take it lying down, is what uh, it said. Uh, as women, a lot of times we feel that um, neither do women come out to speak about any sexual dysfunction, nor do we as doctors ask about it. Uh, also, when we go through the literature, there is not much uh, that is written about female dysfunction as compared to male sexual dysfunction. In diabetes, we know that male sexual dysfunction, erectile dysfunction, all these things do occur. There is a lot of data treatment also available. But uh, in women, this is lacking. And however, times are changing. We are at least um, able to speak about it. And it is for us to ask. So uh, what, how do we define female sexual dysfunction? It, the WHO has defined it as various ways in which a woman is unable to participate in sexual relationship as she would wish. Uh, the clinical definition is the persistent and recurrent disease, decrease in sexual desire or arousal, and the difficulty or inability to achieve an orgasm, and the feeling of pain during sexual intercourse. Uh, let us see how the female sexual response is. There are four stages. There is excitement, a plateau, orgasm, and then resolution. So we start with excitement. This is usually triggered by some psychological or physical stimulation. With the onset, there is um, emotional changes as well as vasoconstriction, vaginal lubrication increases. There are overall body changes which occur. The um, emotional, physical changes are there. The body responds considering it as a stress. There's an increase in the heart rate, the blood pressure, and respiratory rate also increases. There is a mild uh, vasoconstriction within the clitoris, and this results in some swelling over there. Uh, the vaginal swelling also occurs and lubrication. Now, sometimes these changes occur within a few seconds. The next stage is the plateau, which is the, the progression of the excitement stage. This occurs when the vasoconstriction reaches its maximum. There uh, is um, vaginal swelling, heart rate is increasing, the muscle tension is also increasing, and uh, the breast enlarge, and uh, the nipples become more erect. Uh, then we come to the orgasm. This is a very um, synchronized state in which the vaginal, anal, and abdominal muscle contracts, and there is a loss of involuntary muscle contraction. This is usually very short-lived and is very intense. Some women um, do not become, uh, because they are not unresponsive immediately, they can have multiple orgasms also. Then we come to the last stage or the final stage, which is resolution. When we return, when the woman's body returns back to the non-aroused states, uh, the blood goes back to, uh, away from the vagina, away from the breast, and there's a reduction of uh, heart rate, respiratory, respiratory rate, as well as the blood pressure. Now, this uh, response in each woman can be different. Sometimes it occurs very rapidly. It can occur within a few seconds. Um, sometimes they can go direct from excitement to orgasm. Sometimes they can plat go between plateau and orgasm several times before they reach uh, resolution. Uh, now, what are the types of sexual dysfunction that are there? Uh, it could be disorders of the orgasm, it could be pain during sex, it could be hypoactive sexual disorder, um, it could be sexual arousal disorder. So um, there are various factors also. It could be emotional, could be physical, or additional factors. But uh, in, uh, in women with diabetes, usually organic factors could be neurological, cardiovascular, 
could be some psychological factors of stress or uh, alcohol or drug addiction, depression, interpersonal relations be between the partners, the quality of their relationship, um, the social and cultural factors, the belief system, all these contribute to the sexual dysfunction. What are the pathophysiological mechanisms which uh, cause sexual dysfunction? So hyperglycemia is something that can cause a reduction in the hydration of the mucous membrane, especially the vaginal mucosa. This causes a dryness of the vagina and painful uh, sex. Uh, then there could be some vaginal or urinary tract infection, which also causes a bit of discomfort as well as pain in the, area, in the pelvic area. Gynecological conditions like ovarian cyst, fibroids, uh, vaginismus, wherein the um, vaginal muscles go into a spasm also could contribute to this. Vascular complications like a compromise in the blood supply would also, uh, to the vagina and clitoris, would also cause problems of dryness and arousal. Neuropathy, uh, there could be a le uh, reduced sensitivity and impaired sexual response. Uh, there could be an association of uh, either stroke or epilepsy also, which could impair the sexual function. Hormonal factor is also something wherein the estrogen levels are low. This can reduce the lubrication of the vagina. The estrogen deficiency, which uh, would be there, causes a poor general condition and depression. Androgen deficiency also is known to reduce the libido. Psychological factors. Um, you know, anxiety, stress, um, the fear of rejection, sexual performance anxiety, um, traumatic experiences in the past all um, contribute to this also. Depression in diabetes is very common and uh, this can act by impairing the lifestyle, the self-image, relationship status, all these things will contribute to it. Besides that, the social cultural um, factors are there. Um, financial difficulties, um, religious beliefs, lack of exercise, all these things would add. Uh, medications. Sometimes they are already in depression. Probably they are taking medications like the serotonin reuptake inhibitors. This also can reduce the sexual interest. Now, how do we uh, approach these patients? Either we, we, there are two components. One is the biomedical and the other is the psychosocial. Biomedical would uh, cause either direct effect or would indirectly affect via the comorbidities. Uh, whereas the psychological factors would, uh, could be either the pre-existing problem, uh, individual coping mechanisms, and uh, the relationship and coping of the couple. Female sexual dysfunction also could be the tip of the iceberg for a bigger problem, and maybe evaluation would be required for that. Um, what are the symptoms and the signs? Um, there could be um, decrease or loss of desire for sex, inadequate uh, vaginal lubrication, uh, inability to achieve orgasm, inability to re relax the vaginal muscles, pain during intercourse, and non-coital sexual pain. How do we screen them? What is very important is that we take a very detailed history, and this history should be taken in a very comfortable environment so that they are able to speak what are their problems. Uh, there should be some flexible conversations, but they, it should be in a structured format so as to uh, get elicit the history of the, uh, the diabetes treatment also, because we know that diabetes also does cause some menstrual abnormalities, and like uh, delayed menarche and uh, premature menopause. Um, also, the sexual uh, and medical history, the number of sexual partners, history of trauma, abuse, what are the religious beliefs, all these things need to be looked into. Then the female sexual uh, functional index, this is a self-reporting validated questionnaires which are used, and they can be used to scale um, the desire, subjective arousal, lubrication, orgasm, satisfaction, pain. Besides that, there are several other questionnaires which may be used. Now, how do you evaluate? There could be some other issues like the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis which, or, or any hormonal uh, issues which would require evaluations um, and the other um, secondary causes, so to say. 
So, uh, like I said, the biomedical factors would require local or systemic or hormonal treatment. The comorbidities would also require treatment, as well as the psychosocial uh, treatment would re uh, be required. So, uh, usually if they are obese, then an intensive lifestyle modification can be done. Uh, exercise can be advised, uh, they can follow a healthy routine, uh, avoid smoking and usage of uh, other medication. They should attain a good glycemic control, good metabolic control, and these are very important to, to prevent the progression of diabetes-induced sexual problems. Uh, they can take omega fatty th uh, acids for general well-being and improvement in the libido. Also, this can prevent the symptoms of menstrual syndromes. Uh, besides that, the reduced vaginal uh, lubrication can be dealt with by giving uh, vaginal lubricants. Uh, they can be educated, they can sit with the counselor to discuss what is the issue, and probably hormone replacement therapy also can be advocated. If there is a genital infection, that needs to be treated appropriately. If there is a pain while uh, having sexual intercourse, then the investigations need to be done, again, lubricants if required. And um, then if they are unable to orgasm, maybe some sex aids could be used to assist that. Um, the reduced libido also we need to review whether there is any concurrent depressive illness that can be treated, psychosocial uh, support needs to be given for that and treatment can be given, DHEA or estrogen and androgen supplements may be given. Uh, there are, uh, we need, it has to be a team approach. We need to have a counselor on board wherein um, the arousal techniques need to be discussed. Counseling for the couple needs to be done. Hormonal therapy, pain management if required needs to be done. Uh, there are some other potential therapies which are available, but out of these, uh, which we don't use them as yet, um, sildenafil is something which may be used in uh, women who have sexual dysfunction, who are taking serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Of course, if they have angina, then it is contraindicated. Uh, so to conclude, uh, the sexual dysfunction in women is more common than in women with diabetes is definitely more common than women without diabetes. Um, they are in a high risk group. There are various factors. It could be either due to the uh, lack of vaginal lubrication, uh, pain during sex, inability to orgasm. Uh, this could be because of blood sugars being high or low also. The rate of depression is also high amongst uh, people with diabetes. Besides that, if they are wearing devices, like uh, if they're wearing an insulin pump or maybe a continuous glucose monitor, or maybe sometimes even the uh, lipohypertrophy from the insu around the insulin sites, these might you know, reduce their body image and probably reduce the spontaneity of sex. Uh, the problem with women also is uh, the, um, we have to assess them properly. And uh, although there are significant gaps in the knowledge that we have or the treatment that we give, but still I think we have to start somewhere. We have to start asking our patients, like how we ask for other symptoms. We must begin by asking if they have any problems, uh, if there are any sexual dysfunction. And yes times are changing.